He got his name from that washing powder gas. I went to see him one day and he gave me a game. It was all about a mouse and that same mouse's name was Cheesy. His name was Cheesy. Ah, Cheesy. This video is about Cheesy. That's your asshole. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadakura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. Daz, when you gave me this game, I thought you were just being a lovingly good friend. But no, you were just being a twat. This here is an extremely early PS1 title called Cheesy. Have you ever wondered what that yellow bastard did after the Sin City graphic novels in 1996? Well, in that very same year, a few months later, he ended up starring in his own video game and tried to change his identity to an innocent little mouse. This here is a humble game. Like I said, it's an early PS1 title, so there were no major players for the console at that point, except Crash Bandicoot. And I would say that Cheesy was pushed as a mascot for the console, but I'm honestly not that sure. Bearing in mind the company that made this game has a Wikipedia page that doesn't exist. I think the people involved in this game would prefer nobody thought they tried to compete with Crash anyway, and they just been alive to the failure of a Chris. But yeah, there's no franchise from this. This isn't yeah. Crash Bandicoot, or Sonic the Hedgehog, or Mario, or even Spyro. This is just that yellow bastard. I mean cheesy. So what this game is like, God only knows. But I mean, I only have the best expectations that nothing will go wrong, especially considering we will be fighting some of the most epic bosses in video game history, like, um, Slime and Teapot. Okay, this is a live reaction um, from this cutscene. We've got a castle on top of a hill. There's a bird there. This is good. I, I, I understand. And uh, that's a mouse thrown into a cage. He's in the cage now. What was he doing? Why is he in the cage? Who threw him into the cage? What's, what was that thing? And what? Why are there aliens? And there's alien and then he's out of the cage. Okay. Well, that was the intro cutscene, everybody. And I must say, that was very cheesy. <laughs> Anyway, we begin the game and, oh lord, this is a platformer with tank controls. This has never worked in any platformer ever, and this is fact. Well, let's just cope with this. I mean, I can't change it. I suppose I should just follow the arrow here, because lord knows the game gives me no reason whatsoever to climb this box. Thanks, arrow. Perfect lazy camouflage for proper level design in games since 1996. And I very slowly clamber up here to find... Alrighty then. Ah, there we go. Um, the up button doesn't work anymore. We're in a side scroller now. Okay, well, um, let's just try jumping up here. Oh, oh shit, I fucked up. Really? All right, let's try that again. Head back up the box and... You're not joking, are you? Finally! Okay, maybe I just went the wrong way. Let's try going to the right. Oh, I'm falling! This isn't funny anymore. Okay, back up we go. I have a few questions off the bat right now, Mr. Cheesy. Nothing major, but what the hell is going on? That intro cutscene explained absolutely diddly prick. The gameplay can't decide if it's Resident Evil or Ninja Gaiden, and I'm about to cry with confusion right now. Does the back of the box clear any of this up? It has minecarts rattling past experimental monster lunatics on chili fire breathing chili peppers stepping on dangerous blobs of... Uh... Danger with power hungry evil no holds barred super intense dangerous blobs all done that and scientist... <gasps> One... <gasps> Very nasty. And cheesy. A mouse. Right in the middle. Well, if the game developers were just as good as making games as the punctuation checkers were on the back of this box, I'd say we're in very good hands. Okay, well let's start talking about what we're doing in this game. This game is built like so. There are many stages to get through, all surrounded by this. A hub world, as it were, that you further unlock the more items you find in the stages. In the stages, you collect cheese. Because my 
spicy cheese, you know! And also avoid fire, attack enemies, avoid acid, and make it to the end of each horribly designed area. All maze-like, with random mouse holes that lead to random places, all with leaps of faith, and all with some of the worst controls in platformer history. Seriously, even though the level design is so bad and boring and square, the controls make it all seem like Super Meat Boy, and with how broken the controls really are, it feels like they were deliberately programmed like that as a cheap way to make the game feel difficult and cover up how awfully designed the levels are. How do I even explain this? Well, you have momentum as you move, but like, far too much of it. You feel drunk. As soon as you start moving, you never stop. And I'm not even joking. It feels like you're literally driving a car with no brakes. You start moving and Cheesy doesn't stop for at least two or three seconds. You need me to prove this? Okay. I'm playing the game live right now. Watch this. Need I say more? Not even exaggerating here when I say these are some of the worst controls I've ever experienced in a platformer. At least in Bubsy 3D, Bubsy stops fucking moving. That mistake I made earlier? Yeah, that's because I couldn't control myself and I slipped under the platform. Can't influence direction mid-air or on the ground. It's a complete mess and because of that... Cheesy makes me queasy. So how do you attack in this game? You jump, of course. With controls like this though, you'll be begging for a weapon because like I just said, you have no influence on where Cheesy is whatsoever. Because of which You'll find this happening to you pretty frequently. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. It's almost like the devs looked at something like Super Mario World and said to themselves, Hmm, yeah, this is good. This is really, really good. <laughs> we should totally repackage this into our own game. But before we do that, let's just get rid of all of it and make this. Did I mention as well that this game is fucking ugly, even for early PS1 standards? The music isn't too awful, but it looks atrocious. Cheesy's limbs don't connect, none of the enemies look part of the scenery, there's no colour, textures are bland, and it's also unanimated and uninteresting that if you just outright stop moving within the game, you'd think that the game crashed and froze. Seriously, this isn't a screenshot. This is actual gameplay. Wait for a sec. See? Look, the entire game is literally falling asleep in front of you. Oh look, it's a good old safe point. Too cool for checkpoints, are you cheesy? Instead, you have to name them after the one thing I am seriously not feeling like I am right now. Also, whenever you die, Cheesy turns into a sperm and flies off into space to impregnate the alien queen to make more yellow bastards or some shit. It's funny, isn't it, how the most shitty games are always the ones with terrible control, bearing in mind these are video games where control is the main thing differentiating it from any other medium. And when programming this control, human beings had to test them and say to each other, yes, this works perfectly. This is ready for selling to an audience. I know this is early PS1, but Jesus Christ, it's 1996! The 2D platformer was already mastered by this point. It just perplexes me how many shitty games fuck up the most basic and vital aspect of a video game, and I feel like testers need to speak out more and grow some more balls! Whenever you kill an enemy in this game, why does it just stay there? Like, you jump on an enemy, and then the innocent kids playing the game are forced to face the grim reality of their actions. They watch as they see a cheeky little scamp of an enemy happily bob along one second, and then as Cheesy's body makes contact with this creature, they immediately see the life deflated out of the hollow shell of a body it once inhabited. Then, silence and stillness. Nothing but reflection of what they did, as this corpse of a silly enemy is left to allow you to question, who's the real monster here? That thing? Or me? Where are these arrows taking me then? I have a gun now, finally. Is it any good though? <laughs> Holy shit, Cheesy's packing heat. This is bloody sodding awesome and I'm so happy to have this now. Oh, this, um, actually on reflection, what was it I just said? This is bloody sodding awesome, and I'm so happy to have this now. No, this isn't awesome at all. Yes, the bullets are unlimited, but it seriously does fuck all. The bullets never come out of the gun, and because of that, you never know where you're actually firing, and it's so damn inaccurate, I'd rather be throwing children attached to those stupid parent reins. But despite this, I got through everything, and I opened the next area with my gun. More hub world to explore? Hmm, I wonder what's up here. Ah, we're not doing this again! Okay, what's going on now? The game is a top-down shooter. I don't even- Oh, wank! Okay, I'm ready now, but I'm just so lost right now. This 
this game can't make up its mind on what it wants to do for a single minute. Survival horror, platformer, shooter, I don't know. This gun does not work. I'm not going insane here. Look, the gun doesn't fucking work. It's not just me. Because of this, this entire stage turns into a game of constant moving, stopping, shooting, and repeating. Fun, eh? Luckily, the stage doesn't last too long, and we can finally move on. I just have one question through all of this, though. Where the fuck are slime and teapot? Teapot especially is the only reason I've been playing this long. Here we are, another side-scrolling part. Looks different, but plays exactly the same. Heavy iceberg controls and all. Oh, damn. Look, I slipped down here again. Uh, oh, oh. The fire rises. Fuck. You know something? I have never given up on a game this quickly before in my life. That's how unfun this game is. This game is a fun sponge, and it just sucks the fun out of you and leaves you feeling dry and miserable. But you know something? I am curious. Since this game is just so scattered with all of its gameplay types, why not explore a little bit more? Let's use some passwords and find out what else these game developers jumped into with game genres. And, gotta be honest, I am seeing Teapot before the day is done. Well, I wish I could, but the game doesn't want me to cheat. Why? Because fuck this password screen. The tiniest tap, and I mean the literal smallest smack on the D-pad, causes the entire password screen to throw a fit. Look at this. I'm being as sensitive as possible. Look how long it took me to type in one password. This is the footage sped up. I tried holding down the button and letting go of the correct letter, but it's so quick that I couldn't see where the letters were. And I tried tapping gently and quickly, but I kept missing every fucking letter by just one. Look, I just want that N. Just that N. Come on. And after all of that effort, was it worth it? Well, I mean, Shit. well, I mean, no, it wasn't. With yet another game genre thrown in like chicken testicles in a McNugget, we are now riding a leaf down a sewer passage while shooting at fish. Sounds fun? Well, much like the platforming and shooting parts, it's broken. And because of that, it feels harder than it really is. Whenever you hit a wall, you bounce really hard off of it, leading you to hit whatever solid thing you're trying to twatting avoid. Which, in this level, are the only reasons you would be moving near a wall in the first place. So this turns into another game of slightly tapping a button and moving on. And on. And on. And on. Look at this shit. It just keeps on going and the level design never, ever changes. Look at this. Fences and rocks. That's it. For minutes on top of minutes. Once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad, but it's still not fun and horrifically boring. Then we're rewarded with more side-scrolling. Oh, good God. I'm trying my hardest with this, I swear. I know it looks like I'm not and that the level design is so basic and simple I couldn't possibly be having trouble, but it's like playing a game as a fridge that you shove down a hill. Once you start moving, you can't bloody stop. I'm not joking. And you run into random enemies out of nowhere all the time because of that and my God! I really hate to do this as a Brit, but I'm sorry, Teapot. I just can't cope with this game. I will have to leave you. The passwords don't get to you, and I can't be fucked to get through your shitty portions of the game to reach you. I'm so sorry. I feel for you. I feel for you in here. He'll feel it, yeah. This game is a jack of all trades, yet a master of bugger all. You'd think that one mode these people tackled would at least work correctly, but they just don't. Not one of them. Not one of them is even slightly playable or tolerable, and there are so many jarring and unnatural gameplay styles here that it's just painful how wrong they get all of them. It seems like this was far too overambitious for the early days of the PS1, and honestly, with how broken the controls are for the most part, it just feels lazy and entirely rushed on every aspect. I'm at least glad the public and the game makers knew how shit this problem Probably was, and I'm happy that after this game, Cheesy went nowhere at all, unlike a certain bobcat. What could possibly go wrong? And I'm at least happy they knew when to put this mouse down out of his misery, and that he isn't an embarrassing stain on the past of a bigger name in gaming today. He existed for one game and died, and I'm honestly happy about that. And so this game gets slaughtered. You know something? If you dare question my decision on this, and you think that I'm being too harsh or whatever, would well, you know how I know what I'm talking about? Because I'm the guy that got a new PC and made sure that I had a Blu-ray drive for it for the sole reason of making a HD definitive Blu-ray edition of the Muppets Christmas Carol Director's Cut. What, you think I'm joking? No, they cut out one of the most important and integral scenes of that movie that not only is completely heartbreaking, naturally explains the turning point of Scrooge's character as to why he is the way he is in the present, and has a song that is even reprised at the end of the movie to resolve not only Scrooge's character but the entire central theme of the story, but the theatrical VHS and lazy 
Laserdisc versions of that film had it in there. This very crucial scene and everything afterwards had it cut out. So you know what? I added it into the Blu-ray edition of the movie myself and now it's on a disc in my definitive edition of the film as a director's cut. That is how you know to fucking trust me. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Shut up. Das? You complete bastard! <laughs> what? You think the cheesy was the worst I could do? You haven't even seen the daylight of awful games yet. Wait. What do you mean? <laughs> well, just have a look at the floor and you'll soon see. There's nothing here, you gob of cack. Wait, are you outside? <laughs> no. Okay, cut me a break. I'm in your head. I can't fucking see where you are. Now go outside. I'm outside now. What's the deal then? Right, now look at the floor and you'll soon see. so much for getting this far. You are amazing. And not only are you that amazing that I have to remind you to stay beautiful and of course if it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you, but I also have something very special for you since you got this far in the video. Do you want to know something that isn't cheesy, apart from cheesy, the game, the one I just talked about in this video? This is the complete opposite of cheesy. Do you know what that is? It's this awesome new website I'm partnered with called the Pixel Empire. And I think you guys will like the Pixel Empire a lot because what they specialize in are professionally designed and originally designed video game, TV and movie wall prints ready for framing, high glossy quality images and everything. Some of these designs are utterly beautiful. There's so many of them on the site and um, they, um, they ship internationally as well. That's something that's pretty useful. And um, what's great is that today, because I'm partnered with them, I can offer you a special little treat just as a little thank you for watching this video. If you go to the site, order anything you want and use the coupon code CADDY in big capital letters on checkout, you get 15% off of of absolutely anything that you want on the site and everything that you do do on the site not only will you get an amazing wall break but it also supports my channel directly so if you want another way of supporting then by all means please have a look thanks for listening everyone If you enjoyed this video, um, that's very, very kind of you, and I would ask from the bottom of my heart if you could like, comment, and maybe subscribe to my channel, because if you don't interact, then YouTube says that I'm not a priority, and then you'll miss all of my uploads. I upload twice a week now, and I'm, if you're already subscribed and you like what I do, then I'd hate for you to miss anything that I do, so that's important. And also, of course, if you're new, well, welcome, and um, thanks so much for watching if you did get this far. I'm going to link you to more Ked Icarus episodes and my last video on the screen right now. So please enjoy all of them. Just click on them. They're there. And of course, if it's your birthday today watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful.